Okay, everyone, I'm back and we are going to start working on um, getting the cover done. So right now I'm going to put on the cover, the spine and the back, and then we're going to flip it all back around. And um, at that at that point, then we'll actually start adding the embellishments. So I chose this, which is from the Patterns and Solids, and I almost put it in sideways, which I just thought was really pretty. I, this one and the other one that I really liked was this dark blue with the, uh, sh the sailboats on it. So I've decided to keep things simple. I'm going to do the front and the back the same, and then I'm using this stripe for the spine. Okay, let's get started. And then I've got these little pieces that I've cut out that I want to use and a couple of pieces of filigree. Okay, looks like that's ink. That one is not. I was just checking, pausing to check my orientation. Can't see my edges. Go ahead and flip it over. I've just got um, a roll of tape in here, kind of holding it in some form. And then we need to add some ink. Right side, right side. I'm just making sure everything's going in the correct direction. And it is. Okay, so now we're ready to put in our spine piece. It's pretty simple.
Looks like I need to add a little more glue here. much better okay so there's the front the spine the back okay so what I've done is I've got a regular black tag and I've added the fish uh, I think by now you guys should know where this is coming from but I believe it's a 12 by 12 I'm almost positive it's 12 by 12 I just can't remember if it's from the collection pack or the patterns of solids so my plan is to layer the tag and this ephemera card, which I've matted with black card stock. And then I've got these elements that I'm going to tuck in and around um, just to give it a little more interest. I think I'm going to put that like that. And then I've got this die cut that I thought was kind of interesting. I'm going to try to figure out how to use that. This is a die cut, and I'm actually going to put it at the very top of the tag here. So let's go ahead and add that to the tag, since it doesn't really change the placement of the tag. Okay. I think that's cute. And then we'll do something like this. Actually, it looks like it's a little bit crooked. It probably needed to come up a little bit more on this side, but too late for that. Okay, so this is uh, some of the ribbon that comes from the complete bundle if you purchase that from us. I think I'm gonna tuck this right here, and this is just fussy cut from one of the uh, pages. It's just a little piece I had left. I think I'm going to put this down here. spread things out a little bit more actually I think I want to use a smaller circle yeah I like that a little bit better and then I had planned on putting a stamp here and a stamp here I'll, I'll pull this out a little bit more so that it, most of it shows and then I've got this and I I've gone back and forth with the idea of actually layering it on top here like so so I'm not, not totally sure. So that's pretty much the layout. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started placing some of these items. So I'm gonna draw a quick line here. Because that's where I wanna glue the, uh, the uh, femur card. and layer the ephemera card. slightly. Double check. Okay, that looks good. So this is tacked on. I'm going to add a little more glue here. I think it, nope, it's still wet. I thought it dried on me. Okay, so that is done. So these are the main elements. And then we're going to figure out 
where to put our stamps. Oh, you know what? This is exactly the same, so I'm going to pick a different stamp. Let's do those two. Mm. I know. There we go. And then I'm going to tuck this behind. So I'm just going to add a little glue here. Okay. Okay. And now we have but I like the way that looks, so I'm going to tack it on where it's at. Not crazy about the postcard one. Let's do this. I like this a little bit better, I think. The sailboat and the stamp. Okay, coming along. I think I need a, a blue one. <clears throat> so I may dig around and try to find a few more things. I'm liking the way this looks so far. I'm going to glue the whole thing down. Okay, once I get the main elements in, I'm going to let everything dry for a bit and then come back and see if there's any elements I want to add. And then um, once we finalize that, we'll add, we'll install our uh, pages. So for now, I think I'm just about done. I uh, just need to let these filigree pieces set. And I'm just using art glitter glue, by the way. And I've never had an issue with them popping off. It is uh, time consuming because the art glitter glue doesn't like to glue, uh, dry on the metal. So you have to be at a point where you're willing to set it aside for uh, quite a while while it dries or um, clip it down, one of the two. Some areas are easier to clip to than others. 
I just plan to have it at a time where I can get up and walk away from it for at least an hour. It doesn't take that long, but I don't want to risk it bouncing around. And then I've got these two small corners. We usually give you uh, two small and two large. And I'm going to add one right there. Um, and I think that's going to do it for filigree on the front. So I'll look around, see if there's some other interesting things. I'm, I might fussy cut a few more things to tuck here and there. Actually, I'm going to put it on the red. I think it'll stand out a little better. There we go. I think it looks good. Okay, that's it for now. And when I come back, I might add a couple more elements, but that's the... Uh, biggest part and then um, on the flip side we're definitely going to add uh, a couple of pieces to make uh, the back side look a little more interesting now if you like to use ribbon to tie your your album closed uh, it would be great to place your ribbon right beneath this um, ephemera card and then I'm going to do a little cluster on the back side um, so that you could place ribbon behind that too. I, I don't do it that often, but I know a lot of people like that. So if you like adding ribbon, you got a perfect place to, um, to hide the end. And then you don't have to worry about the ribbon lifting off your um, mat, which is what I worry about when it's coming straight off the, the cover like that. All right, so that's it for now. Be back in a little while after everything dries. Okay, I've got a couple more elements that I'm going to add to the cover. One of them is this chipboard piece that I'm going to um, add right down here to the bottom. Just needed a little something over here to create some balance. Okay, hold that in place. This is a sticker. And I'm going to add this. There's already a saying, but this covers it up, and it's just make a little a little more interesting. And then um, I've got this charm, which I really like, and I'm thinking about actually laying it right on top of this image. Um, but if I do, I'm going to take off the the circle, the ring. So I'm going to get these elements down first, and we'll take a look. I got that in straight. I think I am going to put it here. So I'm going to go ahead. Um, these are uh, nippers from my old jewelry making days. And they cut through most of this stuff pretty easy. And I'm not sure, but I think most of this is actually made from lead. So it's pretty soft. There's one side. The key is to sort of guard it because it'll go flying across the room. Okay, now that leaves kind of a rough edge and I'm gonna soften that up with just uh, an emery board, piece of sandpaper. And then I'm gonna dab a little ink on it so that you don't see the, um, the raw metal. As you can see, it's kind of silver. So we'll cover that up a little bit with, um, this is a very uh, rough emery board too, so it will file it down. Just gonna add some ink to it and hide that silver that's peeking out. Okay, so I think that looks good. I'm gonna add some glue here. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the back of this. make sure north is up and then um, I think that is it for the cover so when everything dries and settles down I need a pair of tweezers because I can't seem to hold it and see what I'm doing um, when everything is I'm satisfied everything is dry we'll flip it over and we'll add a little collage on the back page Yeah, I like that. I think that looks pretty. So we've got filigree here, 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 and then we're pulling in a little bit more metal here. So the last thing, by the way, this stack of charms is what comes if you get the bubble. 
while supplies last, sometimes we do substitutions. The other thing I was thinking about was adding a little something here. And I had two options, uh, two options that I thought of. This one, and I also liked this shell. We have another shell. I don't like this one, it's too, too thick. And then we have an anchor. It might be a little too much with everything else that's going on. So the other thing we've got is we've got these little round circles that are from the chipboard uh, collection. I'm looking to see if there's anything else I like. I don't really think so. The fish is kind of fun. But I don't know if that looks right here. No, I don't think so. So I'm going to leave it as is. I really don't want to detract from this. This is my favorite piece right here. So I'm going to leave it as is. And then the next time we get together in a half hour or so, I will flip it over and we'll add a little collage on the back side. And then we'll be done. It'll be time to install the pages. Hey everyone, we are wrapping up on the back side. So I did a little collage of elements and I'm gonna go over that with you. Um, it was a little more challenging to do this than I had originally thought because one of the features I wanted to use was a die cut, um, you know, these decorative die cuts with these fancy edges, I really like them, but it disappears on the blue. So um, this is Fussy Cut from, I'm not sure, but I think it's the 8x8 collection pack. Um, both of these circular items are from the collection pack and I just chose a couple, cut them out. This is a die cut and this is a die cut. Now this piece is actually part of this whole tag and I just cut off the top part of it and glued it back here. And I think that makes for a nice balance. And like I said earlier, if you really like um, to tie your albums together, this is a great place to hide the end of the ribbon. And uh, on the front side, the ephemera card is a great place to hide your ribbon. So each one of the elements that I cut out or, or used, the die cut, um, items I also uh, cardstock back with the exception of this tag. Everything else I went ahead and put black cardstock border around it and um, sometimes I do that sometimes I don't. I felt it was necessary against this blue to help it uh, pop out a little bit more. And I didn't create any dimension here because it is the back of the album and I want it to lay relatively flat um, since you either most people either store it upright or on the back. So that way it won't rock around. Okay, I'm going to hold that for a second. And then this is the back. So as you can see, I think this is an interesting piece, but it pretty much disappears against the blue. So I had to get creative and try to pull in red elements to help with that. And I'm trying to see if I got this in straight. I think it's relatively straight. I think my black border is a little bit off, but this looks good. Okay, I think that's it. So we are done with the front and back uh, covers for the album. Um, when I get back in a few minutes, I'm going to organize my pages to make sure I install them in the right order. And then we'll quickly do the install and we will be... Uh, done with the, that part of um, the project. Now, as usual, I go back through once it's completed and I add um, embellishments throughout the book. Um, it's really hard for me um, as, as a designer to do that page by page by page because sometimes what happens is you wind up really heavy with embellishments on the front and then you run out of elements for the back. So I wait till all my pages are done and then I go in and I go back and forth and I kind of work from the outside, page one and page eight, toward the middle um, so that when I'm at the end of the book, I'm not actually out of interesting elements to add to the pages. That will be covered in the walkthrough. So that's it for now. Um, any other elements that I add to the front or back, I will go over in detail in the walkthrough um, since I, I haven't, I won't be videotaping it. So that's it for now. We'll be back soon with the page install. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are back to work on the inside liners for Catch the Day. So 
let me show you what, what I've got here. Both of these are from the 12 by 12 collection packs. Um, this is from the collection pack. I think this is too. I don't think it's a pattern. Yeah, this is also a collection pack. So uh, what I did is I had a, a full sheet of each one, split them in half. Actually, these are four and a quarter, and I'm going to probably still need to trim them down. And this is also trimmed out at four and a quarter so that I could figure out what to do, exactly where to trim it. And then I'm going to use this um, crab as an accent piece. So what I decided to do kind of last minute um, is add a pocket to the inside covers. So because we're going to add a pocket, I want to make sure that this is all level so that when I go to put something in the pocket, it doesn't get stuck on this piece right here. So I just trimmed out pieces to fit, um, and I just manually measured it out, put my little tick marks, put it in the, um, I was going to say printer, but put it in my trimmer, and cut it down to size. So I'm going to get these down, then we're going to add our pocket. It's not quite perfect, but it's pretty darn good. And everything should pass through nicely. Okay, now we're gonna do this side real quick. I'll make sure I've got it the right orientation. I do. Because it's not a perfect square, once you trim it out, make sure you put it back in the way you marked it. Um, because it might not fit as well the other way. Because some of these aren't perfectly straight. All right. There we go, now everything's on the same level. So next we're gonna add our pockets, and these are nine and three quarters by four and a half. Nine and three quarters by four and a half. So basically, um, you're going to have an eight and three eighths, I said nine and a quarter, stop. And nine and three eighths by four and a half. So this is gonna be, when it's finished, eight and three eighths by four. So it's gonna fit right here. And I needed to make it a little bit smaller than I would put uh, for a mat because there's some volume to it. So again, eight and three eighths. I'm gonna double check that, okay. Yep, it's eight and three eighths, about four and a half. And then you're gonna score a half inch on three sides. Make your pocket. Uh, having pockets in the front is uh, a nice thing, especially if you don't get all your embellishments done or want to wait to install the embellishments after you know where you're putting your pictures. It's a great place to store those things um, while you're waiting. And then later, you know, you can fill it with um, photo mats. Um, but I'm going to wind up putting some ephemera cards and stuff like that in there to um, save for later installation. Okay. Same thing, nine and three eighths by four and a half. Nine and three eighths by four and a half. So those are in. So the blue pieces are going to go on the bottom, and then the net pieces are going to go on the top. Now, I didn't even really notice this when I was working in the album on different pages, but behind the net is um, a very faint image of sailboat. So you may want to make sure you've got it in the right orientation. I had just been figuring it out by flipping it over and seeing what was on the reverse side, but like I said, there is an orientation, but it's very faint. If you got it in upside down, I don't think anyone would notice except you. So these are going to go in second because we're going to go ahead and cover the lower pocket first. And what, what I'm planning on doing is, that's what it's going to look like finished. Oh, you know what? These are a little bit shorter than than I had planned. How's that? 
four and a quarter and four and a quarter should have been eight and a half. I don't know. Oh, because that's four. That's why. Okay, these are a little bit shy of what I was expecting. So, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. So, one of the things I wanted to do was add this accent piece. I was planning on putting it down here, like so. But because this is a little shy, I may need to put it up here. instead so let's see how that looks I think that's going to be fine yeah so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to have a black line through this and I've done this on other covers before I'm going to tape these two pieces together and then use it as a unit and trim it down to fit and this uh, the crab which is upside down right now that's right side up is gonna go slightly into the pocket. Not a lot, just a tiny bit. Okay, so how do I tape them together? We're gonna turn it over and we're gonna add, um, it doesn't even have to be, it doesn't have to be um, double-sided tape, just any tape to hold them together. And then we'll trim it down as a complete unit. So the key is to get the tape on without shifting your papers. And I think I did okay. Let's take a look. Yep, that looks good. So now I'm going to trim this to the right width and then also to the right height. Okay. We'll add a little ink where we just trimmed it. Okay. Let's go ahead and put this piece in. Oh, we need to trim this too. I forgot. Uh... I'm going to add this back up here so I can see the edge of the pocket better. Okay, so I'm going to go right here. Okay, we're good to go. Whoops, that's not the right glue. I need to put that away because I keep picking it up. Okay, and after this, we'll trim down. The, um, the net. <clears throat> I'm not going to install it this way, but I want my um, trim to come off the net side, so I'm just putting it in upside down to mark it. Let's see. So the plan is to tuck the crab slightly into the pocket. There we go, oops. And it's gonna go like so. So I want most of the crab to show. So I'm, gonna, I'm doing it both ways to double check my trim. Looks like I had it right on. Okay, let's trim that off and get it inside. Okay, since we trimmed it, we need to re-ink it. Just on the edge we trimmed. Okay, we'll get some glue on this. Get this installed. So 
So the reason my my measurements were off is originally I I planned it without a pocket and um, I also planned it without that trim piece. So when I decided to add the crab in the pocket, it changed my measurements ever so slightly. And that's why we're going through this one more time. This is the part that's a little difficult, getting it into the pocket. We did it, we did it. Okay, so I'm gonna repeat that process over here, but I don't think you guys need to sit and watch me go through it a second time. So I'm gonna call it right here, and the next time we sit down, we're gonna be doing the cover and the spine. Okay, real quick, there it is, all finished, um, both sides, and then uh, as I had mentioned before, I'll do, I'll tuck ephemeras and extra embellishments into the pockets to be used uh, in the album later on, but for now I'm just going to stick them here to remind me that I actually need to car uh, back some of these with cardstock for later and for a couple of different inserts inside the album. Okay, so I'm going to take a break. Um, when I come back... Um, we will do the cover, back, and spine. And the last thing we'll do is install the pages. That way we don't have to deal with the pages while we're trying to cover um, the outside of the book. And then the last thing we'll do is install the pages. Okay, I got my tape on and we're ready to go. So the next thing I like to do is verify that my pages are in the correct order. So this is page one. Two, three, and it's usually pretty easy to tell because the way I do my patterns is they spread across two pages. So if it was out of sequence, it would be very obvious to me. That's page two, three, four, five, six, seven, and page eight. Okay, so that is correct. So now that I've gone through them, I've actually flipped them in reverse order. So I'm going to start by installing uh, the last hinge, which is page eight, seven, and eight. It's going to go right over this hinge. And then I use my pick tool to reach in and grab the backing off the tape. And some days it goes right in and other days I got to work out a little bit. Doesn't want to go in. I don't know what it's getting hung up on. Sometimes just having too many of the uh, flaps closed puts so much pressure on the pocket page that I have trouble getting it on. There we go. That was weird. Anyways, it's on. So then I like to, before I do anything else, lay it down and see that I'm getting, you know, even borders top to bottom. There it is. Wow, that was tough. Now, before I pull the whole thing out, because I moved it around quite a bit, I just want to make sure it's still square, and it is. Okay. That's in place now. Of course, the flip side's always a lot easier. Since I'm not trying to keep it square, I'm just worried about getting the tape off. Did you plug your car in? Yep. My son just got home. And he drives an electric car, so I was just reminding him to take care of that. Okay. The page I'm installing right now is page 5-6. Uh, 
Oops, it tore. Nala's happy to see Sam. That's her pay attention to me. Bark growl. Okay, <laughs> great. I'm gonna take it off one inch at a time, for, uh, apparently. Before I move forward, I'm gonna go back and reburnish my um, tape because I think that's part of my problem is I'm trying to reach in and I'm getting not just the backing, but the tape's wanting to come with it. And that's why I'm having so much trouble. Okay, there we go. So let's push that all in place. Okay, so that's done. And let's burnish these real quick. I'd already done it once, but I'm just gonna give it a little extra. Okay, now we're on, this is five, this is four. better one way than the other, but it is. Okay, now we're on the last one, which is page one and two. There we go. This is our last strip of tape and we're all in. So that's that. So the next time we get together, I'm gonna to do a detailed walkthrough and I'm gonna talk about the things I did not cover in the tutorials. One of them is gonna be, I'm adding inserts. So there's gonna be an insert here and one here. And um, the insert sizes will be in the cut list. But if for detailed design, you need to go back to the walkthrough. Okay. And um, I always do those last because I want to see what paper's left over. So that's it. That is it. That's our cover, inside liners, and page installation. See you soon.